Okay, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon for some of, of us. Welcome to the second session of the online meetings. Energy meetings, a distinguished lecture program of CERN. Today, we okay, are good morning, professor everyone. Good afternoon for some of the department of Virginia. Welcome to the second the session of the science and technology at Javier Modares University in Tehran, Iran. A professor Gorjan received her PhD in mechanics of biosystems engineering from TMU in 2014. She has published two books entitled Power Photovoltaic Solar Energy Conversion, Technologies, Applications, and Environmental Impacts in 2020, and Solar Energy Advance Advancement in Agriculture and Food Production Systems in 2022. Her main research area is renewable energy applications in agriculture she has been the lead guest editor of a special issue in the same topic in the Journal of Sustainable Energy Technologies and Assessment in 2021. And other research interests of hers are related to solar photovoltaics, solar desalination technologies, hybrid PDP systems, energy and X-ray analysis, and renewable energy system modeling and simulation. Professor Chiva, thank you very much for accept our invitation. And now the screen and the microphone is on you. Um, thank you very much, um, Professor Marco, and uh, hello, everybody. Uh, let me share my screen, and then I will start the presentation. Okay, if you can uh, see my shared screen, then I will start. Perfect. Okay. Um, thank you again for uh, giving me the opportunity to present in this webinar on solar energy for agri-food systems, opportunities and challenges. Here is the Renewable Energy Research Institute as an affiliation of Tabia Modaris University. This research institute is located in Faculty of Agriculture of Tabia Modaris University. Here we are working on um, renewable energy technology with more focus on biofuels, biomass, and solar energy technologies. But in some cases, we have also worked on um, geothermal and wind um, energy. We have master and PhD students um, that they are working on their thesis in this research institute. Uh, and uh, uh, we have also students from other cities in Iran that come to do their research in this institute and also um, postdoc requests uh, from uh, abroad. Okay, let me first start uh, from energy transformation. We know that the reduction of energy-related CO2 emissions is the heart of the energy transformation. Um, to set the board on the pathway toward meeting the aims of the Paris Agreement, the energy-related CO2 emissions need to be reduced by around 3.5 percent per year from no until 2050. If we want to um, follow this trend, energy transform, uh, transformation by 2050, we need to reduce the carbon emissions to 70% lower, reduce impact greater economic gain, falling energy costs, job creation, full energy access, and improved energy security. Transforming the global energy system would also improve energy security and also universal energy access. In terms of um, power generation, or if we want to talk about the energy sector, the solar PV and wind are dominant 
energy renewable energy sources that um, are harnessed to generate electricity uh, in the world globally actually but renewable energy for food system transformation which is the focus of our research here and this webinar um, since the early 1960s the world's population has been doubled and we expect um, to exceed 9 million people by 2050 Definitely, this will um, treat the food security. The food security is a universal concept and its criteria establishment is a major problem for the entire world. Um, if we can consider the food security, there are three um, dimensions for food security. We have security, safety, and sovereignty. The security means ensuring all people access the war have access to sufficient food to meet their dietary needs. The safety means ensuring people have healthy, nutritious food that is free from contamination or degradation. And we have sovereignty, which means the empowering people to make their own choices about the food they eat, where it comes from and how it's produced. Um, food security has also its four pillars. We have and that they are availability, access, utilization, and stability. It has been proved till now that climate events can affect the food system, especially in countries with agricultural systems that are sensitive to weather instability. Agri-food supply chain. What is the agri-food supply chain? An agri-food supply chain, or AFSB, include uh, all the steps, involved in production, manufacturing, distribution of food, until its final consumption. Uh, schematically, you can see all these steps here from farm production, then we have manufacturing, packaging, distribution, transportation, market, and your home. It means a complex network composed a set of activities from farm to the fork. What is important here, and it should be noted that energy is an essential component in all of these steps, from production to consumption, final consumption, actually. It means the post-harvest applications, um, dairy production, food storage, processing, transport, etc. Traditionally, the energy required for all of these uh, stages um, were generated by labor, animal power, but over time, these traditional forms of energy were replaced by fossil fuels and made both farm production and food processing more intensive. Here we have uh, all the stages of um, agriculture value chains with more details. As I mentioned in previous slide, we have different stages from the production to the final consumption. We have production, for example, land preparation, irrigation, fertilizing, harvesting, or post-harvest and storage, that one of the well-known post-harvest activities is drying, pressing, packing, storing, and distribution and retail. For all of these stages, we require energy, the energy supply in different forms. For example, we have electricity, mechanical power, household fuel or thermal. Um, energy sources. So energy is um, a very important and crucial component of agri-food supply chain. But uh, we know that uh, most of these activities are um, derived by fossil fuels, so we have the greenhouse gas emissions. The greenhouse gas emissions, as shown in this um, graph, we have the uh, greenhouse gas emissions as a, uh, generally from uh, different sectors. For example, we have the greenhouse gas emission from electricity or heat production, 35%, from industry, 21%, from transport, um, 14%, from agriculture, forestry and land use, 24%, building, 6.4%. But we see that um, from the agriculture and forestry and land use, we have 24%. If we further divide this section, we have 50% for agriculture and 50% for forestry and land use. Here we have 
more uh, uh, division from different parts or different activities that uh, have greenhouse gas emissions. For example, intrade fermentation, manual left on pasture, synthetic fertilizers, manual management, or other activities that one of them is the use of agricultural farm machinery or other equipment in different stages of food production. So the share of um, uh, greenhouse gas emission from the agriculture sector is meaningful. Um, so energy is an important parameter, is an important component, but the pattern of energy consumption in different stages of food production is um, different country by country. For example, here you can see from this graph that we have generally global energy consumption and share of total energy consumption by segment. But here we have high income countries and low income countries. For example, for high income countries, um, the share of processing and distribution is higher than low income countries. And globally we have, uh, we have a, a specific uh, share for different um, activities. These are in, these include cropping, cropping production, um, livestock production, fisheries production, processing and distribution, retail preparation, and cooking. So we must be aware of the share of the energy consumption for all of these stages for further decisions in each country. Um, in this case, the energy can also be a part of the solution to climate change for food systems. This can be achieved through the use of renewable energy in agri-food system, production of renewable energy from agri-food system, reduction in greenhouse gas emissions embedded in food loss and waste, and carbon sequestration, which is more expensive and a little complex. But our focus here is on the use of renewable energy in agri-food systems as a solution to climate change food system links. Uh, so I want to uh, emphasize on the role of solar energy and the advance uh, of solar energy in agriculture sector to mitigate the greenhouse gas emissions and uh, increase sustainability. We have um, a view on the global potential and development of solar energy technology. The first step is showing the power generation based on various sources. For example, we have solar PV, wind, hydro, and even fossil fuels, oil and natural gas, coal. And uh, this line is showing the ca carbon intensity of electricity, which means the amount of uh, um, CO2 emission per kilowatt hour. We see that the share of renewable energy sources for, generation, for power generation has increased over time. This is an ex this is a estimation for 2050. And the second graph is showing the energy supplied by three key solar technologies. We have solar heat collectors, photovoltaics, and concentrating solar power. It is also clear here and visible that we have um, that the rate of the growing rate of solar technologies has increased over time in comparison with, for example, 2000. Sorry. And the third um, um, graph is the annual solar PV capacity additions by application segment. But this graph is showing only the PV uh, in uh, application um, PV technology in different um, segments. For example, utility scale, commercial, industrial, residential, off-grid. The line is showing the percent of utility scale. This also uh, is showing um, a growing trend. But solar energy technology in agriculture, and we know that the energy is the main driver for almost all agricultural practice, practices and can be provided by um, conventional energy sources as well as renewable energy sources. But dominantly, fossil fuels are still the main energy supply in agriculture sector. And uh, mm, other renewable energy, renewable energy sources, and specifically solar energy, can be used in agriculture in a number of ways. So the solar energy can cut form electricity and heating bills. Solar heat collectors can be used, for example, to dry crops, warm homes. Uh, 
livestock building and um, greenhouses. Um, here I have provided a, a, a photo that's uh, showing an overview of different um, agricultural activities that can be powered by solar energy. For example, in the first one, we have the solar greenhouses. The greenhouses or cultivation in greenhouses can be provided by uh, photovoltaic electricity generated from photovoltaic or we are using uh, solar thermal collectors to provide the favorite um, environmental conditions uh, for crop production. The next one is solar water pumps. Water pumps are also crucial for irrigation in agriculture. The third one is agrivoltaic. Agrivoltaic is also a well-known technology with high growing rate. That uh, it is the installation of PV panels on the farms, open field farms, and also greenhouses. The next technology is aquavoltaic. The aquavoltaic is the installation of floating PV and water bodies in which the aquatic animals are ground. And uh, the next one is um, the use of solar energy for heating or cooling of um, farm buildings. And here we have also the um, use of uh, solar collectors for water heating. And the next one is desalination or distillation. Here, this is a distillation system. In agriculture, uh, in agricultural uh, productions or in farm productions, we require water, definitely. We require large amounts of water, and sometimes uh, the quality of water doesn't meet the uh, requirements of the crop, so we need to desalinate the water. So solar power desalination system are good options to provide the water for crop production. The next one is um, solar powered uh, dryers. The dryers are um, also devices that are required for post harvesting and driving of agricultural products and um, protect them from uh, degradation due to the high moisture content. And the next one is the crop protection. For example, in open field farms, we require to protect uh, crops from the attack, the animal attack or bird attack or uh, even insects we require some equipment um, that can be powered by um, solar PV technology. And the remaining ones, the three remaining ones, are um, related to precision agriculture. Precision agriculture, uh, which is modern, which include modern agricultural activities, and uh, here are solar powered robots. There is solar power tractors, and this is solar power weather stations, which are uh, uh, required in um, agricultural farms. Uh, since the applications of solar energy in agriculture is vast, I have chosen some uh, some of the important uh, applications, and I will present them here. Uh, one of them is agrivoltaic. As I mentioned in the previous slide, the agrivoltaic allows the simultaneous use of land for both agriculture and photovoltaic power generation. This is a um, fast-growing technology, and we can say that uh, from this that uh, around uh, that in 2012, um, the globally uh, capacity of agrivoltaic was five megawatts, but uh, in 2020, uh, it uh, reaches at least 2.8 gigawatt power. Um, some countries have started to invest in agrivoltaic projects. For example, we have the Japan since 2013, China 2014, France 2017, and we have uh, USA since 2018, and most recently Korea. And uh, here you can see the timeline for the installation of agrivoltaic projects around the board. This is a schematic view of an agrivoltaic uh, system, uh, which is the installation of PV panels in um, higher uh, um, spaces uh, in comparison with power plants, in common power plants, because we have agriculture and machinery and we require to provide the space for trans their transportation. Um, 
and here are photos of um, some agrivoltaic projects. The multiple benefits of agrivoltaic technology can be exploited particularly in developing countries and in arid and semi-arid regions because um, shading cre created by PV panels can protect crops uh, and uh, at the same time uh, generate electricity. And this will also reduce the water consumption uh, because it, it, it decreases the evaporation of soil moisture. Different types of food fruit varieties that normally cannot be grown in semi-arid regions with a dry, hot climate and high uh, level of solar radiation could be cultivated with uh, agrivoltaics. Another application of solar energy uh, is the solar greenhouses. The solar greenhouses can be in the both uh, classification of passive solar greenhouses and active solar greenhouses. Um, the passive solar greenhouses are designed in a way to collect as much as solar energy as possible. Um, but the active solar greenhouses are mainly integrated with solar systems. Mm, for example, the PV panels, PVT panels, solar thermal collector to intensify the capture of solar energy. But the passive uh, solar greenhouses, as you can see in this photo and in schematic view in this uh, figure, um, the design is simple, but the, the thermal performance is low. However, we require to uh, store the heat generated by solar energy in these buildings because uh, solar energy is an intermittent uh, source of energy, and during nights we don't have access to the thermal to the um, heat generated by solar energy. Uh, for example, here you see some examples of the um, thermal energy storage units in greenhouses. The first one is TCM, uh, phase change material in pipes inside the greenhouse. The next one is the was a water tank uh, as a media for um, storing the thermal energy. And the rock bed is another example. And here is the photo of a I think that uh, it is a Chinese greenhouse uh, with a um, wide wall um, toward the sun radiation. The yeah, active solar um, greenhouses have higher thermal performance, but uh, it is evident that they will be more expensive because of the installation of PV panels. The PV panels can install on their roofs or walls uh, according to their design. Uh, and different um, technologies of solar uh, PV modules can be integrated with solar greenhouses. For example, here we have um, uh, semi-transparent PV modules. Here we have uh, organic photovoltaic modules or thin film modules. We have uh, LSC modules and also solar glass are different uh, technologies of solar PV technologies that can be integrated with solar greenhouses. Um, the next um, application or solar water pumping system. The PV powered water pumping system are among the most promising solar powered pump applications, especially at remote locations where no reliable access to grid electricity and also cost effective diesel fuel uh, exist. The solar power pumping system uh, depends on the type of the pump. We have the AC pump or DC pump. The configuration for installation of different subsystems would be different. For example, we need inverter. DC for DC motor, we don't require inverter. And um, these are some uh, basic arrangements of different subsystems that are used in solar uh, pumping systems. And the next one is the solar desalination system. Uh, as I mentioned before, um, desalination systems are required in locations specifically where the uh, quality of water is not sufficient for crop production, for irrigation, we require to desalinate water. Therefore, the integration of um, solar power generation system can be a good option 
we have different types of uh, desalination system. Thermal, some, of, some of them require thermal energy and the other one require electricity. And um, according to these, we can, in, we can integrate um, these desalination systems or with solar thermal um, systems or uh, photovoltaic systems. And the application of um, solar energy and specifically PV system in precision agriculture. Uh, the agricultural productivity uh, will, be, in, will uh, be increased over the year through the mechanization and automation. The use of robots and uh, modern agricultural farm machinery. The progress in agricultural automation and mechanization has increased the energy demand specifically electricity for the modern agricultural activities and therefore employing renewable energy can be a solution you know, both in terms of energy consumption and reducing the need for fossil fuels uh, or grid electricity which is based on fossil fuels and uh, also increase their reliability. For example, we have solar powered farm robots. Solar powered agricultural robots. Um, there are extensive opportunities to implement solar power robots in agricultural fields to perform different farm applications, including plowing, seeding, spraying, weeding, fruit harvesting, etc. Here are some examples, are and um, uh, very few examples actually are from solar powered robots because a very few companies have. Uh, commercialize this type of robots. We have several companies that are, that are uh, producing the agricultural robots, but very few of them uh, are solar powered. For example, here now we have the solar powered AG boot. This is a weeding robot, but um, we do not have installation of PV modules on its body or on in its structure. Instead, we have embedded batteries, and then they can be charged by solar power stations like this photo. And the next one is a ladybird uh, on a beetroot crop. Um, you see that the uh, flexible PV modules are installed on the body of the uh, robots, and they can provide the required electricity during the working in the farm. And the next one is a, a wine scoop. Uh, this is also a robot. Uh, that, that uh, no. uh, its required power is generated by PV modules. And this is a uh, reading robot um, produced by solar, solar power autonomous, uh, autonomous reading robot. Um, and uh, it is produced by the company Ecorobotics. And these are some examples of um, solar powered electric tractors. Um, these two tractors are um, allocated to Solect Tracks company that uh, produce two types of um, tractors, which are uh, electric tractors, and their required power can be um, provided by a utility scale solar PV plant. Um, these are off-board uh, systems because we do not have installed the PV modules on their uh, frame, on their structure, on their body of the tractors. But this um, configuration is onboard PV integration, solar power tractor with onboard PV integration. These are different types of integration of PV modules with uh, electric tractors. Okay, um, but we have um, some challenges and barriers uh, uh, for the integration of solar energy technology in agriculture. Uh, we have several applications, um, more than these applications that I've mentioned in this presentation, but because of the time, so I decided to uh, present the selective ones. But we have a variety of agricultural applications that can be powered by solar energy. But we have challenges and barriers in uh, this integration. Uh, one of the 
main challenges, main barriers, actually, uh, for the uh, global deployment of uh, solar power agricultural activities or solar powered agri-food systems is the high investment cost um, that um, it requires some policies to reduce the financial risk or implement uh, or some specific policies that should be implemented to attract the lower and medium and low income classes. Uh, the other challenges that have been delayed the deployment of solar energy technology in agriculture and agri-food system are the instability in the performance due to their heavy reliance on the availability of solar radiation. We know that um, in nature, solar energy is an intermittent uh, uh, source of energy, and therefore we have it uh, in, during the day, but not at night, so we require um, some energy storage system or we require to integrate the solar power systems with other renewable energy sources as an uh, as auxiliary energy sources. Uh, for example, we can use a hybrid renewable energy system, solar with biomass, solar with geothermal, solar with wind or other types of renewable energy sources. And the other option is a thermal energy storage unit that can be employed to increase the reliability of solar systems extending the working hours over the sunshine hours. Um, another challenge in the use of specifically solar PV system is that the limited uh, efficiency of commercially available modules, solar modules. Uh, for example, for simple PV modules, the efficiency limit is um, 3 to 40% electric efficiency. For, and for crystalline-based modules, we have the efficiency um, values below 21 percent that this can be a challenge for use of the PV system in agriculture. However, these are the challenges and barriers um, uh, integrated with technology or technical aspects of this integration. But we should also consider the policy, the what is what is required to be performed by a government, by uh, decision makers that. Uh, are crucial to make this integration successful in the agriculture sector or agri-food system. Some recommendations for decision makers are presented here. Scaling up the use of renewable energy and specifically um, solar energy, because we are talking about the solar energy in this webinar, um, will require efforts from government, private sector, financing institution, academia, international, non-governmental organizations, some recommendations for decision makers are collect better data to guide renewable energy and investment in food system. Uh, for example, if we have a good data set or better data can guide the design of technological solutions, improve understanding of business case and raise awareness of potential benefits. We should be aware that which location have the highest potential for the integration of agri-food sector with a, a specific type of renewable energy. Leverage mapping tools to assess um, opportunities and inform policy making. Uh, this can also help um, uh, to find the areas with a high potential for renewable energy adoption in agri-food systems. Improve access to finance for end users or enterprises. Financing needs to vary greatly from context to context for both end users and enterprises. Um, uh, actually, the access to affordable long-term financing will be required for renewable-based systems that are um, uh, employed in agri-food systems. Develop integrated approaches to transforming the food and energy system. We must be aware that uh, this integration uh, should, not should not create uh, conflicts, uh, particularly in land and water use or strengthen innovation for technology and energy efficient uh, appliances. Uh, this is uh, this specifically um, associated with the research and development in the technology, um, increase the performance or efficiency of the system and their integration in the agri values, uh, various agri value chains. Uh, focus on raising awareness and building capacity. We should also increase the awareness of um, yeah, um, 
the public farmers or everyone who is integrated with the farm uh, an agriculture sector and farm production and users by the speed lack of awareness of available renewable based solution and their long term benefits have impeded the adoption of those solution and, uh, and the the way forward uh, we um, discussed um, that each step of the agri-food system requires diverse energy services that vary significantly depending on the value chain structure, nature, and depth. The decentralized nature of solar energy solution makes them up for meeting the energy needs in an environmentally sustainable, affordable, and secure manner. The socioeconomic dividends can be significant, particularly for hundreds of millions of people thriving subsistence and livelihood from agriculture, governments and local stakeholder engagement will be crucial to bridge the gap in understanding the needs, creating market linkage and delivering capacity and financing with the uh, food system transformation strategy that includes renewables and specifically solar energy as a key pillar. This is a um, report that jointly uh, released by the International Renewable Energy Agency and the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. This shows, this shows the importance of the integration of renewable energy technologies with agri-food systems. And uh, in this uh, report, uh, the role of renewable energy in agri-food system and the opportunity that they can offer to advance energy and food security objectives are presented and fully discussed. And as a final slide, uh, these are my recent publications. That one of them uh, is for 2020, and the most recent one, the more recent one, is the a book uh, entitled Solar Energy Advancement in Agriculture and Food Production System, just published by Elsevier in 2022. Uh, the first one is um, uh, the focus of the first book is on the uh, photovoltaic solar energy conversion, but two chapters in this book are allocated to the on farm applications of solar PV systems, and uh, one chapter also is allocated to uh, application of solar PV system in precision agriculture, and the mm, next one is specifically on the solar energy advancement in agriculture uh, and food production systems. Okay, thank you for your time and uh, for your attention. Uh, I would be happy to answer if there is any question. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Chiva or Jan, for your interesting presentation. Very clear, uh, very interesting, all the examples uh, of applications that solar energy can have here in the agriculture. Uh, we have some time for questions, so if someone has any question, uh, can write it on the chat here in uh, Teams or Zoom or even YouTube. So if there is any question, just <coughs> write your question in, in the chat. Uh, there is one question in YouTube channel uh, from Professor Claudio Tembreiro. I will read it, but also I will put here in the chat for you, Chiva. Mm -hmm. uh, Professor okay. Tembreiro, as uh, do you have some ideas about economical analysis of the integration of PV, either as autonomous systems or rate integrated ones, also including cost of final disposals? Mm -hmm. um, you know, for integration of, um, if you are talking about the agri-food systems with PV, in both forms of on-grid and off-grid, you know that the cost of off-grid PV systems is more um, uh, when uh, we are we uh, compare the PV system with the same capacity. For example, um, the on-grid and the off-grid. Uh, for 
small capacities, it's, uh, there would not be a much problem for, you know, for uh, using the off-grid PV system. But off-grid PV systems are affordable only in remote locations when the access to the grid electricity is um, costly and even impossible. Impossible. But for um, uh, economical analysis of this integration, you can uh, use a feasibility study for, for a specific location. And you can use also different types of software for, to, to do this. Uh, for example, for economic uh, analysis, you can use the rate screen software uh, if you want to analyze uh, economic, uh, uh, economic aspects of your PV system. Or you can also use the PVSYST, but the PVSYST is not very strong in economic analysis. The red screen is um, uh, more preferable. Uh, however, um, I can generally say that uh, the cost of the final cost of a pivot system it depends on the location and the application and the capacity. For example, about the angry pivot system, we say that the uh, larger capacity are more affordable than small capacities. But when you are using battery, it's better to have a small, for a small capacities, it's better to uh, make them off-grid and use batteries. This is a general trend for integration of PV system. <coughs> um, the next question. That's yeah, if we, you can also include some comments mm -hmm. about the energy mm -hmm. storage system coupled to PV. Mm -hmm. um, if uh, you uh, want to implement an off-grid PV system, definitely you require um, batteries or um, integration with other uh, fossil-based um, systems, power generation systems. For example, diesel generator mm, and even batteries. But uh, um, some uh, novel technologies, I have heard about them, that uh, they um, can be used in off-grid PV system, but they are not based on battery. But I'm not fully aware of the technology. <clears throat> Great. Thank you very much. Uh, I have another question okay. um, regarding the effect that climatic variation has produced in the use of solar energy in this kind of application. Have you evaluated how much affected that it has been the solar uh, energy applications in agriculture by the climatic variations we have right now? Um, uh, actually, I think that um, um, I, I I don't know what what is the what, what you exactly mean about the, the uh, application of solar energy. energy in agriculture climatic. Yeah, for instance, right now we have even more irradiation as a consequence of the climate change. So uh, the PV system that the water is standing for one irradiation condition are changing right now. So it affects in the efficiency of the system. So how you evaluated this kind of uh, phenomenon? Different, uh, different. Uh, sorry, I, I think that I don't uh, have your voice clearly. You mean the uh, different, um, uh, share different um, levels of solar radiation? in different locations? I, I wrote the question, just in case. Sorry. Climate atmospheric variation have affected solar energy system for agricultural applications. Um, climate atmospheric variations, you mean the climate change in a a larger scale? You mean the climate change or no atmospheric variations? Climatic atmospheric. Aha, uh -huh. it's, uh, you know, the different levels of radiation can, um, it is uh, um, clear that different 
um, conditions in terms of solar radiation can affect the performance of solar systems. For example, um, about the solar PV system or solar thermal collectors, um, the effect of radiation because of the intermittent nature of solar energy can increase their performance. If you are using the PV system, uh, the performance, uh, the electric performance will be affected. If you are using the thermal system, uh, this will um, uh, affect it. The thermal performance will be affected. Uh, and um, location by location, these uh, uh, parameters can uh, differently affect the solar system, the geographical location of uh, uh, the place that you are, are implementing the such system uh, can also affect uh, the final out, output of the system. However, uh, as a general uh, method, we use the um, uh, energy storage system. For example, for solar thermal system, we use the thermal energy storage system, or for PB, the batteries are used to um, uh, create consistency in power generation, but, but by the solar PV system. For example, about the agrivoltaic system, um, which is uh, specifically related to agriculture sector, uh, we should, uh, before installation of equitable type systems, we should uh, uh, determine the locations that have the potential for such in installation. Otherwise, this integration would not be successful. So we should uh, be aware of the conditions that can meet such integration in the agriculture. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Chiva, for for your answer. Uh, we don't have questions, uh, so in order to finish our meeting, uh, I would like to give you the opportunity to provide some conclusion words of your presentation. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you and all uh, the participants in this webinar. Thank you for your attention. I hope that um, the presentation and the webinar uh, but useful for you. Yeah, finally, yes. Thank you very much, Professor Chiva, for your presentation. Uh -huh. We invite to all the people that is attending today's presentation to be um, waiting for our news for the next invited, which will be in November 17. Okay, thank you very much. Uh -huh. Keep in touch.